I'm John Leguizamo, and I'm alive on South Beach. Barely, but still living. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dina Stewart. You're Dina Stewart? I'm Dina Stewart. This is the Dina Stewart. Oh, that was last week's show. Never mind. Hi, I'm Stuart Stewart. And we're at the Cafe at Books and Books on Lincoln Road. And we're alive on South Beach. It's a show with a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You know, recently the Miami International Film Festival celebrated its 30th anniversary and ha showed 138 films in 10 days. There were people on this beach walking around so bleary-eyed because those are the die-hard movie fans who try to see everything. We fortunately only saw a few. And what did you think of them? I liked some of the ones that we saw. Uh, some of them were kind of dark, but um, all in all, I enjoyed myself. Well, you know what the beauty of this is? We get to see films, and you can too, anytime you want to come down to Miami, that probably will never be seen in a major theater, but are really fantastic pieces of art. And there were so many of them that I don't know which one to talk about first, so I'm going to talk about something else. You know, recently I was playing a word association game, and the category was Swedish exports. Somebody said their greatest export was the meatball. Somebody else said their greatest export was Greta Garbo. But my estimation, their greatest export is sitting right next to me. This is Lena Olin. Welcome to our show. Thank you very much. Thank you. And what are you doing here in Miami? We're here uh, because uh, a film that m I made in Sweden last year with my husband Lasse Halsam directing called The Hypnotist will screen here at the Miami Film Festival. You've had the good fortune of working with a lot of directors, Ingmar Bergman, Paul Mazursky, Roman Polanski. Mm -hmm. I mean really cutting edge directors. Out of all the directors that you worked with, which one did you have the most fun with? All of these directors that you've mentioned were extremely fun to work with and it's like a new universe and I think Part of the extraordinary thing with being an actress is that you get to enter these different... It's like playing a video game <laughs> where you enter a new universe. Every time you get a new part, a new film with a new director, it's a new universe. And they've all been so... I could not say... It's been so extraordinary fun. It's like... I couldn't pick one before the other. I really couldn't. Well, it's really amazing because I've seen several of your films and, and you, you develop these characters that I'm sitting there, I either love them or I hate them or I don't know what to make of them. But suddenly when the movie's over, I'm going, wait a minute, that's not enough. <laughs> that's great. I like that. I like, thank you. I like that a lot. Well, let me ask you another question. You did this film with your husband. Mm -hmm. Now, Dina and I were husband and wife and we worked together. And one time we were commissioned to do a poster and the two of us worked at the same easel at the same time and got into an argument over the color brown that almost led to a divorce. How, how do you work with your husband without taking your work home and making it into something a lot bigger than it really is? I think that we, I do, we do take the work home when we're shooting together. Not if he's doing something that I'm not involved in or the other way around. We sure don't take the work home, uh, but when we're shooting together, we do bring the work home. Uh, and that's sort of part of the fun, that you can, you can wake up a Sunday morning and say, I think this is what she should do. I think this is why she's not, uh, th we can't do it that way, or uh, I think that's part of the thrill. It's really a fun Well, thing. what happens when you have a difference of opinions? Like you did something, you put your heart into it, you think it's exactly the way it is, and it should be, and he's looking at it through the little screen and says, I don't think so. What happens next? I, I, I've made a habit of never arguing with directors verbally, to never tell them that this and this and this and this is how I want to do this. Do you send them emails? No, I just do it. And I'm always right. And if I'm wrong, I'm like, oh, no, I was not right. Or I'm right. And then I've, I've worked with such great directors. They will then say, yeah, you're right. This was the way to do it. This is, this is great. So, but I've never 
it's just a waste of time to try to verbalize something when it comes to acting for me. I, I don't get, you know, sometimes actors will talk forever about something and I'm like, really? <laughs> and now you're going to do it after blah, 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 <laughs> I, I, you know. Well, everybody, let's keep our eyes open because whatever production this lady is in, she's always wonderful in it and she's worthwhile seeing in anything that, that you perform in. So thank you very much. Thank you. For those of you who love to eat. And we're two of them. Yeah, we had a phenomenal experience. Where? You'll see. After this, we tried Colombian cuisine, refajo, patacón, you know, an empanada. We're going to have ropa vieja, moros and cristianos, maduros, pan colombiano. You take it from there. My mouth is watering just hearing you say that. It sounds so sexy. That's what we're going to have. You're from Australia. Yes, from Melbourne. What's the best story you're going to bring back from South Beach that you're going to tell people in Melbourne? Hopefully tonight with all the amazing food. <laughs> I know. Isn't this incredible? How many restaurants are we going to tonight? Seven, I think. Seven restaurants. Wow. I haven't eaten that much food all week. So let me ask you guys a question. What did you think of this kind of dining? Wonderful. It was amazing. Uh, we got uh, a chance to taste uh, several different types of uh, food, uh, cuisine, and walking in a nice area on the beach and able to uh, experience uh, different restaurants. Food, food, and more food. Well, speaking <laughs> of food, there was a big food festival down here a couple of weeks ago which had all these stars of the food world cooking up their high cholesterol dishes for everybody to enjoy. But I think the best part of this festival, like many of the other festivals, are some of the satellite events that go on outside of the big arena. And this was one of them where we met some chefs who were really interesting people. Why are you here tonight? Why am I here tonight? I'm here to be celebrating right now. Well, you know, an amazing thing happens here on South Beach. It happened with Art Basel, that suddenly there oh, were yeah, like well, satellite events, yeah. and this appears to be a satellite this event. This is, this is a satellite event. event. It's bas basically not involved with uh, Sobe, but I'm telling you, this is our annual one, and we're going to be here year after year after year after year. This is going to be the spot. And you're, you're not doing this by yourself? Oh, no. I'm um, hooking up with Catalina Hotel Catalina, number one, U.S. Foods, uh, is one of my sponsors. And a Don, couple of other good chefs. Don Julio is one of my sponsors, and yeah, off the Food Network. Who are the other chefs? Uh, we got Emily Ellen, that's rocking with me, and and uh, Josh Lyons was on the show with me season eight. And how did you become a chef? I think it was just an organic transition. Um, I am all, I'm very creative and I love to change people's emotions. I love to affect people in a positive way. So like you do with writing songs, I like to do that with food. And I thought, you know, you can really kind of bring somebody back in time with a great meal, just like a great song. I actually, before cooking, I was a, I've been in a band for like 20 years. What kind of music do you play? It's a, this one's a modern rock band. It's all original, called Fell on Deaf Ears. Actually, what's kind of interesting about this is that all the songs were written by me and an Indian guy out of London. So it's an international group. Did you ever meet him or? I met, I never met him for three years. We wrote all the songs via internet. He would send me the music tracks. I would lay down the vocals and remix it here and then send it back to him. Three years later, I finally met him in London. We redid the whole album from top to bottom. Well, here, let's hold it up for the camera. Yep, there you go. Fell on deaf ears. Can you hear that? <laughs> you know, the Adrian Arts Center for the Performing Arts does a lot for the community besides presenting great shows and great artists. They have this local program called Miami Made, where they invite creative groups who have stage productions to produce them and present them at the Arch Theater in a special presentation that's open free to the public. And to celebrate the grand opening and also to celebrate the opening of a new hotel, the South Beach Riviera, we went to an event that the Arch Center threw and this is what it was all about. This is, this is a great little new hotel that's open tonight. And what is the art center's connection to the hotel? 
Well, the Adrian Arsh Center hosts the Miami Made Festival every year. This is our fifth consecutive year, and we focus on supporting Miami artists or people who have a connection to Miami and giving free performances of their work for the community at the Adrian Arsh Center. But this year, due to the generous support of Riviera South Beach Hotel and Alan and Nathan Lieberman and the Lieberman family, we're able to make sure that more people have access and awareness. So they're hosting a wonderful kickoff party here at this hotel to tell people about Miami Made. I'm standing here with Alan, Alan Lieberman, right? Alan Lieberman. Yeah, who told me he's got nothing to talk about, except he's one of the geniuses that owns a series of little niche hotels here on Miami Beach that caters to very unique people, and they're always a lot of fun. Tell us a little bit about your hotels. Now we have all kinds of hotels, quiet hotels, noisy hotels, rock and roll hotels, hotels with bars, hotels with no bars. So we, we offer we, whatever you want at a reasonable price. Well, you know, if you're coming down here and you just want to have a party, or better still, if you want to reinvent yourself, you can spend a couple of nights in each one of your hotels and figure out who you are, right? It's pretty cool. It's a good idea. But if you go to our website, South Beach Group, it tells you noisy hotel, party hotel, quiet hotel, apartment hotel, whatever you like. And then if you like it enough, we have extended stay apartments where you can rent an apartment for a month, two months, six months, furnished, whatever you want. In other words, he aims to please. Thank you. It's been great, thank you. Bye, Mom. You know, over the years, we accumulated a lot of stuff and had to get a storage space. And it was time to move from that storage space to someplace closer. And just thinking about it created stress but I was so pleasantly surprised when we actually made this move from one storage mart to the other it was so stressless and I want you to meet the reasons why Have you ever moved from one location to another? Do you remember how much stress you felt? Well, I just had one of the best experiences in my life because I hired a company called Move It. And these two gentlemen showed up. And I want to say, first of all, say thank you to you guys. Thank you. Well. And let me ask you a question. How long have you been a mover? I've been a mover for 10 years. And what about you? In the last 15. And do you guys like it? Oh yeah, I love it. I love doing it. I love going state to states and you know, like to meet the people, you know what I'm saying? There's different personalities out there. What about you? What's the best moving job you ever had? Well, I said the best moving job is the big houses. You know, you don't you, 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 you don't move too much stuff, man, but you move some stuff though, man. It goes even when you got somebody good working with you, it goes even smoother. And I want everybody to know that this is the best moving company in Miami-Dade, Broward, and Broward County. So thank you very much. Thank you. You know, over the years, we all accumulate a lot of stuff. And sometimes we, our apartments aren't big enough to put it in, so we have to find a storage locker somewhere. And I got really lucky because I hit upon Storage Mart, which is the best storage company in Miami-Dade County. And this is Hector who runs this particular branch. What's the address here? Uh, 4920 Northwest 7th Street, uh, Miami, Florida, 33126. And he's one of the nicest people I've met in a long time. So if you have a storage need, come over here and check out Storage Mart because they're the greatest. Well, how do you like that, Stuart? We're at the end of another episode. And not just any episode, but this is our 40th episode. Can you imagine that? Actually, it's our 41st. <laughs> it is? It is. Well, you see that? And you blame me when I can't remember our anniversaries. I can't even remember the episode dates, so... I always that. thought, of, what, you sure it's not the 40th? Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. <laughs> Whatever. In any case, I want to give everybody a heads up to keep watching their emails because in the next few weeks we're going to announce a brand new website which I think everybody will get a big kick out of because as part of the website our articles and our work can be translated into 200 different languages. Just stay tuned and we'll fill you in with details as they become known to us. Looking forward to seeing you the next time. I'm Stuart Stewart. And I'm Dina Stewart. And once again, we're alive on South Beach for syndicatednews.net.
Hi, I'm Desmond Child, and I'm alive on South Beach. <laughs>